ah, well, we've made it here by the, by the body of water that we need to cross. And we've brought our uh, bark in in a nice big sheet. We're gonna flip it over onto the wet ground. We want it to stay damp. Uh, this bark took about four hours to get it off the tree. So we're about four hours into our, our project here. Now we need to get some other materials gathered up. I've got a, uh, a nice piece of ash tree here, very straight, still nice and green. We're gonna split that up for the gunnels. Uh, I've got a uh, piece of hickory here that's gonna turn into the clamps that hold the end pieces together. We're, in, we're going to need other various pieces, mostly probably of ash that we'll use for thwarts and for frames on the inside of it. There aren't too many pieces. It doesn't take a whole lot of wood compared to another uh, different kinds of canoe. And we'll also need uh, a little bit of cordage here. We've got some hemp cordage to sew it up uh, in various places. Next step, we're gonna get these ash gunnels split up into quarters. We've got our, uh, our ash gunnels split into quarters, and then we actually took off the inner section here uh, so that they're very bendable. That's the idea here. We want a nice flat piece that we can bend. So we're putting together the building bed here. This is actually the shape of the bottom of the canoe. We've taken the thwart pieces. We've put in pins about three or four inches apart for the, the very end tips. And now we've got a uh, a sort of a temporary thwart here that's the width of the bottom. We can just put these gunnels in and that'll, there we go. So that looks good. So this is gonna be the shape of the bottom. Now we're gonna put some stakes around here so we can lay the piece of bark in and it'll kind of put it into shape for us. Well, we're at, a, at another one of those delicate spots with, with the canoe here. We've got it in our building bed, but now we have to uh, shave down the bark side, the, the outer bark, uh, so that we can make a crimp or, or an end to this canoe. And I can kind of show you with this piece of paper as if it was the bark. What we have to do is make two little end crimps uh, on either side so that it makes a little, the, so the front and the back of the canoe come up at an angle. So we'll, we're gonna shave off that bark so we can make these little folds. They're very, very, very tight folds. You wouldn't think that the bark could make this kind of a fold. Uh, who knows, it might break or crack, but that's what we're trying to do. That's how they were made in the time period. We've got the last little bit of bark shaved off here, hopefully, so that we can do a fold in our, in our bark. And now it's really tricky. We've got the ends clamped together here, holding up the very end, and now we're gonna push down and get these two folds in all at once. This is fun, this is not easy, and who knows whether it's gonna crack, break, whatever. So, now let's see, I want this to go.
We've got it uh, folded up at least temporarily and tied up with these. These may may stay or they're, they may be temporary, but it holds it all into position. It's looking nice and symmetrical. We, it hasn't filled out yet because we don't have the thwarts and the, the uh, gunnels in here, but it's starting to look like a canoe. So we're maybe seven hours into this process. We're at the next day. Uh, this has to stay flexible, so we've wet it down overnight, and we can even see there's water standing in this. It's gonna, it's going to hold water. Hopefully, it'll keep water out. It'll definitely hold, keep water in right now. Uh, next step here is we're going to cut these end pieces, the peaks on the prows, down a little bit, so it's a little easier to get the gunnels to stretch all the way or at least enough to uh, help support these in. So uh, we're gonna trim these off real quick. Our bark is trimmed. Let's, uh, next up, let's go ahead and clamp the ends of this together. Come over here, Brandon. He's gonna hold that together. Our uh, nice bendy stick has been thinned out in the middle so it can really bend a tight. It needs to bend like a clothespin. And I'm gonna close this up like this. You can see it holds that whole thing together. We're going to tie this up at the top, and that'll hold this whole thing together. It's, it's an amazing process. We've got the ends done. It's time to work on these gunnels, and we've got uh, four gunnel pieces. Uh, we're going to cut these off a little bit to get to the right size and, and the gunnels aren't going to go all the way to the tips of the canoe. Uh, really we're just strengthening up these, these outer edges. So we'll cut these off a little bit. We'll put an inner gunnel and an outer gunnel and start to tie this together and bind it up to the bark so that it supports these outer edges. Each canoe is unique. As we put this together, I can see how if we had a different piece of bark, if this was bigger, if we had different materials, uh, we would adjust how this canoe was made. This one, we're gonna use just one thwart. Hopefully that'll work. We're gonna build one thwart to put it in the center here to hold this apart. Uh, we're gonna use this, uh, this wonderful stick here and uh, that's gonna create this thwart and we'll see. I don't think we're gonna need other ones, um, but this thwart and then we'll do some ribs. So here's our finished thwart piece that goes on the top with these nice thin ends that will wrap around. And here's our, uh, our frame piece with the ends that'll go down, down low. There, that's the, uh, the last rib in. I think this is ready to go in the water. Wow, this is incredibly light, very, very uh, agile for a little canoe. 
just sits right on the top of the water. So we can just spin right around. Wow, we did it. It's amazing what two people can do in 12 hours with this kind of material. This thing paddles uh, amazingly rapidly. It's so short that it turns on its length very, very quickly. Uh, you've basically got everything you need if you just have a nice sharp ax and a knife. Uh, you can get up there in the trees and take this bark down, build the canoe out of the materials that are just right at hand. It truly is an amazing experience. And to be able to put this together with uh, so few uh, directions or descriptions about what they were doing. There have only been a handful of these elm bark canoes that have been made in the last couple of decades. So it's amazing to be able to do this. And it truly was a privilege to be able to work with this bark, bark off of a tree that was just about ready to die. So we really were able to repurpose this uh, and use it. Such a wonderful thing. There were a lot of challenges in this and we overcame every one of them. Finding the right tree, uh, getting the bark off of that tree, that particular tree had a lot of lesions in it and this bark has, has some imperfections. But we, and we were very concerned that this bark was going to split, it wasn't going to bend like we needed it to, to, but it did. In every way we were able to get that done. Uh, we had that time challenge. Were we able to make it in the kind of time period that we needed to? We were able to do that. And all those things, all these things are, are only capable because we were using Eric as a consultant. So if you're interested in any project like this, make sure to check out Eric Vostein. Uh, his, his link is down in the description. Uh, so helpful with this kind of a project. It was great. What an immersive experience to be able to build this kind of canoe. Uh, and put ourselves in that same kind of a situation that these explorers in the 17th and 18th century were in where they needed to build a canoe in a short period of time. If you're interested in more canoe videos, make sure to check this link out.